If you have your Bibles with you, I'd ask that you turn to Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. And uh, we're going to begin reading in verse 19. Acts chapter 11. Beginning in verse 19. The Bible says, Now they which were scattered abroad, abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phenis and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then the tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch, who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that they, with purpose of heart, that they should cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man, and full, of the, and full of the Holy Ghost, and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass, for the whole year they were assembled, they assembled themselves with the church, and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. And in those days, the prophets came from Jerusalem unto Antioch. Let's pray. The Lord, we thank you for giving us your word. Lord, we thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for a church where we can uh, preach the word without fear and without uh being scared of re recompense. God, we pray that you would preserve our freedoms. Lord God, this morning we pray that you would bless your word. Those that are believers, Lord, we pray that you would make your word precious to them and the lost, Lord, that you might open their hearts and save them and do a wondrous work of grace even today. We know you're able. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, some somewhat familiar verses. I think sometimes we run through them and we really don't get a hold of exactly what's going on. But the emphasis of this is being Christ-like. Uh, and there's a lot of attributes of Christ given in this that we model over and run through and never really get the emphasis of why the believers at Antioch were called Christians, that they bore the person of Christ. They bore the attributes of Christ. They, they bore the essence of who Christ was. Now, you are the only person that can answer that for yourself if you bear the person of Christ. And we're going to look at a couple of individuals in this text that it says that they did that. They did just that, and because of that, God blessed them. If you have something in 2022 that you should desire more than anything else, and it would be to bear the presence of Christ, to bear, to bear his character, to bear who he is, to bear, to bear how he presents. And if that is so, you won't have to tell people you're Christians because he'll pick up on it himself, themselves. They'll understand it and know it by the way you look, act, and, and present yourself. Back in verse 9, the Bible says, And the hand of the Lord was with them, uh, excuse me, verse 19, Now they which were scattered abroad. Now, it's very key that you understand and know the Lord God can use any situation. Now, had the church of Jerusalem been obedient, this great scattering wouldn't have been necessary. 
but because they stayed at Jerusalem and tarried at Jerusalem and had no interest in spreading the gospel, particularly to the Gentiles, they were smitten and scattered like snow. Now, would that not ever be the situation at New Testament Baptist Church? You know what? You may get a little wary and a little bit scared if uh, if the church over there in North Carolina calls Jared and Jared uh, and Jared and his uh, wife choose to accept that hey, we're getting down to nothing. Don't ever be afraid to send someone out because that is the that is the very life's blood of a church. That's what makes effective ministry. And so we find that because the church of Jerusalem would not do this, the flip side was that he whipped them, he smited them, and the results was the same, they scattered. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that rose about Stephen. Now the first individual that we see named here, if you remember, uh, the very thing, the very same thing was said of Stephen as it will be Barnabas in a few minutes that he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, uh, the day of his execution, he did not, he was not angry at anyone. Now, that's hard to believe, but he wasn't. In fact, if anything, he was still concerned of their souls. Amen. He was still interested that others might be saved. And, 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 and as Isaac on the cake, he was able to look up into heavens and see the Son standing at the right hand of the Father to welcome him home. And it made them so infuriated that they killed him. Now, so a key to this, of what we're about to see in, in this creation of a powerful church in Antioch was... The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what's needed today. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a taboo word. You know, the Bible promised this, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there in the midst will I be. Now, what, what person will the Lord God be in the middle of that? And that person is the Holy Ghost. It's not Christ himself. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. So the, the moving agent that we need in 2022 is the work and the power of the Holy Ghost. And that's exactly what they possessed here, and that's what they had. And because of what occurred to Stephen, Stephen was where he needed to be. Stephen was in the will of God, and what that accomplished was the spreading of the gospel. You know what? When you're in the when you're in the will of the Holy Ghost, the the results are going to be great. The the results are going to be wonderful when we get to that point. Now they were scattered. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that rose about Stephen traveled as far as Phenis and Cyprus and Antioch. Now all those cities are Greek cities. Now my own thing. My own thinking from reading this text, they didn't go there for uh, the Greeks. They didn't go there for the Gentiles, but they went there because they knew Jews were there too. They went there with a specific thing in mind. Now, if you ever went somewhere with a specific thought of what you were going to do, and when you got there, something totally different occurred, and something that you had no plans for whatsoever, you were involved in. You know, very frequently that's how the Lord works. He works in ways that you don't think about right. if you're obedient. Mm -hmm. if, if you do what he bids you to do. If, he, uh, if you're uh, listening and, and have your spiritual ears turned on, you will follow him and he will bless that. So they came to these, these Greek, Greek or Grecian cities. Verse 20 now some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene. Now I want you to see this is this is specific and, and, and needful information because they weren't Jews. Some were of that city. 
They were of Greek origin. They were Gentiles. They not only had never heard the name of Jesus Christ, many of them had never even heard of the name of Moses. Many, many never even heard of the great God Jehovah. Now, if you know anything about the Greeks, know this. They got, they got more gods than Carter's got liver pills. They are God upon God upon God upon God, but they never knew the true God. Remember when Paul tra traveled to Athesin, Athens? He says, you have a statue here unto God, <laughs> and you don't even know it's God unto the unknown God. See, he was unknown to them. You know, we live in a condition today where the God of the Bible is largely unknown to many. Now, they'll, they'll have a form of godliness, but they don't know and understand the person of that great God, Jehovah, that always has been, always will be, and they don't know who he is. Such was the case of the Grecians. Now, their intent was to preach to the Jews, and the result was that the Greeks heard. The, the, the feed, uh, excuse me, the seed fell where they didn't think about it falling. Uh, the seed hit ground that they didn't even know about. See, we don't know what's going to be accomplished by the Lord Jesus Christ in 2020. And you know what? What, what, is, what we have a hard time gripping is we don't have to know. It's not in our ballpark to know. It's just simply to put your faith and trust in Him. And so we see these men, these individuals, these people were listening. When they were come to Antioch, uh, and there were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this was a taboo thing. This was a brand new thought. Listen, before this time, the, uh, the Gentiles had not been spoken of. Now, uh, that was a dirty thing concerning Jewish people. Now, we can't get that in the culture in which we live. Uh, the great American melting pot, if you will. Uh, we've been taught for years that people are people. And you know what? I do believe that. But, think about this. It's just something to give you food for thought so you'll understand the Jewish idea. What about if your ministry was to sodomites? The only people that you felt compassion for were gay people. That was like going to the Gentiles to them. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? The most, the most worst of the worst, mm -hmm. the most vile of the vile was coming to Gentile people. That's how they felt. But I want you to see these two individuals had the courage and, and the very bravery and were not embarrassed about it to approach the Greeks, to approach these filthy, ungodly, Gentile people. They spake unto them. They give them the cross. They give them the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21. And the hand of the Lord was with them. You know what we need at New Testament Baptist Church in 2022? For the hand of the Lord to be with us. Uh, and I believe he will be if we follow him. Uh, I know it's a commodity that is difficult to have in the day which we live, but you know what? That commodity still exists. It's still there for the taking. It, it, it's still there for the blessing. And, and so we, we find these men that had found the will of God that seemed outside the thinkable things of Jew, the allowable things of the Jews, but when they were obedient, God blessed it. He was with them. You know what? I would much rather preach to two or three people and know that I am in the will of God than preach for thousands and, and, and not have that assurance in my heart. Very much so. And, and so we find that these two men did that what was outside the context of the Jewish culture, but they knew it was in the will of the Lord Jesus Christ and because of that, God was with them. He, he, he blessed it. He, he, he blessed what they were doing. And the hand of the Lord was with 
them, and the results, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Now that's another significant part today, is that turning unto the Lord. You know, uh, I have sadly seen this personally, that Christians behave so badly that most people find it a mockery. Mm -hmm. they, they, they find it, yeah, is that the best you can do? Treated so poorly, anger, malice, contempt. But you know who can overcome all of that? The Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you, you know who can uh, change looking through eyes of contempt to eyes of love? The Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, redeemed people, uh, let's this year be the example we ought to be for the lost, for the people who are not saved, that they'll look unto us and be jealous of our righteousness, be jealous of our love. Of some have compassion, making a difference. Oh, that's what I want, is it not you? Uh, you know, love will move you to do stuff. And routine won't. Do you know what routine will give you? You'll get bored with it very quickly. But love will move you to keep coming when there's no reason to come. Mm -hmm. Love will, keep, will, will bind you to people that you don't even know. And so we find these Grecian believers... <laughs> You, God used people to bring them that way. Now, I understand uh, God is going to save whom he will, but this is the thing for me. I want to be part of it. I, I, I want to be involved with it. I want to be in the preaching. I want to be in the singing. And, 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 you know, that's why some brought 30, some brought 60, and some brought 100. You know who brought 100? The people who wanted to be involved. Yeah. And the others, mediocre. <laughs> or... You could either be like the one, and I personally believe that had the one, the one that had the one thing and went and digged in the earth and hid it, I have no confidence whatsoever he was ever saved to start with. Uh, I, I, I believe he was a fake. And, and so we find that this thing that seemed risque to the average Jew, God bless. Verse 22. And, the, and then the tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem. Now, I want you to see that the, the leading church, the first church, First Baptist Jerusalem, was where it was all happening. But remember back in chapter 9, just before this, where was Paul headed? Uh, or Saul at that point? He was going to Damascus, right? Mm -hmm. And the Bible literally says, and to find anyone believing this way, to bring them back bound down to Jerusalem. Right. So what had to be at Damascus? Jesus. Some kind of group of believers. Everybody says Antioch was the second church. I don't believe that. Something was going on at Damascus. You know what? That, that, that man... Simon, or Simeon, Simon. Mm -hmm. He baptized Paul, right? Was he a member of the church at Jerusalem? I don't know that he'd ever even been to Jerusalem, right? And so we have to assume there was a church at Damascus, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we find that this Antioch was a brand new group, and, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, if you'll follow your history, Damascus was more of a Jewish city. But we believe Antioch to be the first Gentile church. And, and so they went back to Jerusalem. We, they went back to the sending church. And they said, you can go this far. Then the tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which is at Jerusalem, and sent forth Barnabas that they should go as far as Antioch. Now, I don't care who you send out, someone is going to have an issue with it. Now, sad but true, that's what I've learned through 27 years of ministry. But you know what? If God's in it, send them anyway. Send them anyway. You know what? 
I don't know that Barnabas had a pedigree, do you? I don't think, you know, I don't know that Barnabas did cartwheels at every service. I, I don't know what his nature was. We're going to find two characteristics of Barnabas. But we don't know anything beyond that. But the church was assured that Barnabas would do the right thing. Now, what about you? Sisters, brother, and both, is there enough confidence in you that I would know that you would do the right thing? That I, I was confident that you would get the job done. That was their belief in this Barnabas. And, you know, uh, I, I never... <laughs> uh, I never really fully understand the argument between Barnabas and, um, and Paul. Paul said in one place, I would study to his face, or was that John, I mean, excuse me, Peter. But there was some kind of great dissension. But I will say this, they both went to the Gentiles, and Barnabas did it first. And uh, so we, we see then, this was a very compassionate man that was willing to set aside his Jewish hood simply to share the gospel. That, that, that's, that's an amazing man. That's a man that, that puts the needs of others before his own pride and his own self. That's what we need in 2022. Uh, verse 23, who when he came had seen the grace of God. Now how do you see the grace of God? I mean, I've never seen grace just boom. Never seen G-R-A-C-E fall out of the sky. How, how do you see it? And, and it's specific. Barnabas said that he saw the grace of God. Mm -hmm. You see it in results. Yeah. You see it in the impact to the life. You see what grace does. You see the results. And uh, Barnabas was very, very impressed. He, he was very moved. These heathen, ungodly, well, I can't say that they were ungodly. They were full of gods, just not the right ones. Uh, turned completely unto Christ. <laughs> you know, I, I would love to see that, wouldn't you? This bunch over here at Carlisle, the Ishmaelites, wouldn't it be a wonderful thing this year if they'd all be converted into Christ. Mm -hmm. You said, well, that's not Abel. You're not doubting me. You're doubting God. Mm -hmm. Sure. Our God is Abel. And, and, and so we see then that we as the Lord's people we ought to be able to give praise and glory and, and, and not put self first. Look for the grace of God. Look for the change in your own life. Look for the difference. Look for what uh, and, and listen, you know, I understand all the articles and uh, all, all the uh, attributes of living a separate life, but don't look for that. Look for love. Love, joy, and peace. Look for those three essentials for a redeemed person. Uh, you know what? I know, at least for me, I can't say for you, I don't love enough. I get aggravated at people. I get upset with people when I ought to be just loving. Just having compassion. Uh, just with an interest of where they'll spend eternity. Right, there you go. That, that, should, that should be my interest in people that I don't even know. People that I, I've never even met before. That is the love that Barnabas had for these people who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and, and I want you to see I love that it says that he was glad he was happy he was excited and, and what it's not saying is this and this was Peter's situation he wasn't critical now, I, I, I'm, I misquoted a minute when I said that, Bar he would, that Paul would have stood Barnabas to his face. No, he would have stood Peter to his face. Yeah, right. And if you remember, it was because Peter wouldn't sit with the Gentile believers. Yeah, yeah. Stood, what stood him to his face? I want you to see that Barnabas was not that effective. 
was not about character. He was excited. When he'd see the grace of God, he rejoiced. He was glad. <laughs> Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing? How glad would you be just to see one soul saved in 2022? It, it would excite me. It, it would give me enough stuff to make it to 2023. Amen. Uh, and, and that is where we as the Lord's people ought to desire to be more than any other thing with an interest of seeing souls saved. And so uh, he was glad and he exhorted them. Now this is a third of your uh, ministry, Jared. Reprove, rebuke, exhort is what Paul wrote to Timothy, right? What's exhortation? It is a largely ignored one third of the man of God, the called man of God's ministry, and that is simply just to encourage God's people, and and not just encourage like you to say, do it. Yes, God's in that thing. Move forward. Exhort them. You're doing a great job. Continue. Exhort. So he 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 saw what these Gentile believers were doing and he said that's great you keep it up you dig in you be strong yeah. the whole time and and that's the ministry that in 2022 that's the ministry i want to be in i don't want to be homegrown me and it's time to quit and it's time to give up no no i want to be in the ministry of exhortation as this year before us comes down the pike I want to be where the Lord would have me to be. So he exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Now, two things. What is your purpose? You know why people go around in circles? They have no purpose. Now, you ever heard of a dog chasing its tail? That's when you have no purpose. You have no reason. A lot of energy expelled for nothing. Right. And uh, many times God's people are like that. And so he encourages them here, take that energy and cleave to the Lord. You know what's going to sustain us this year, New Testament? Cleaving to the Lord. Yeah. Just, just, just holding on to him. Remember, remember that woman had the issue of blood for 12 years? She said, if I could just touch his garment. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? Oh, I do. You know, a touch of Christ will sustain you. It will, it will keep you going for a few more miles. Mm -hmm. Amen. When we just read of Stephen, it said he was full of the Holy Ghost. How long have you been running on the empty? Or running just a little bit low? Now, I am horrible around running my truck too low on people. I had to burn up. You know, when I was young, it wasn't as big as issue because you could just dump some gas in the carburetor and take off again. You can't dump gas into a fuel ejector. And if it burns up, you're about $500 out. And... We don't need to run on love, do we? We don't need to do that. It's dangerous. Because, see, if you're running on love and the devil comes your way, how are you going to kick it in and get away from it? The Bible says in, is it James chapter 4? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You know, it, it, it takes a lot of effort to resist the devil. And you need energy, you need spiritual energy to do that. And, and, and so we find as the Lord's people, we need to be like the Grecian believers in Antioch and just, just rely on the Lord, uh, cleave unto him. Verse 24, for he, meaning uh, Barnabas, was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost. See, Barnabas was running on the pool. Now, I don't know about y'all. Um, I've been to a couple of different missionary trips, 
and just completely worn out. And prayed, you know, Lord, I don't know if I'm finished this up. When I went to Kenny to the Ukraine, that was two weeks, almost 14 days. And I knew I had to preach the next day, and I was, you know, Lord, give me strength. And somehow, some way, by his mercy and grace, I'd wake up and I'd feel like a teenager again, and we'd run her another day. See, you're not going to get that far from the Lord. He was full of the Holy Ghost. You know what? We need to be that people in 2022. We need to be running on full. Now, I've heard all my life as a Baptist, well, that's a one-time thing. Well, then why do you run out? Now, I'm not saying saved again, but I've been really, I, I run low spiritually at times, haven't you? You ever run on fumes? Uh, have you ever put her in neutral with a stick shift and post down the hill and hope that you have enough to get you to the, to the, uh, to the filling station? I've been there spiritually. Yeah. And what I need is a full up, a fill up. Now, if you like me, and I don't know why, I guess it just seems better on the flesh, but I hate my, my white pickup. Probably right now I take 60 or $70 to fill it up. But instead, what do I do? I'll go and put 20 a day on it, that makes it somewhat better, <laughs> you know? Uh, but what I need is a full tank. And you know what? Christ can give you that. The Holy Ghost can fill you up. If you don't believe that, read Isaiah chapter 6. And see, Isaiah was filled up when there was nobody else there. Yeah. He was the only one there. You discouraged about numbers? Better than one. Right? The least people I've ever seen in this building was me and my son. <laughs> and he was only here because he knew we couldn't broadcast without it. Faithful to a ministry that I have very little understanding of. See, that is where we need to be in 2022. Filled. And, and, and so we find this man called Barnabas had the very same uh, description, had the very same, uh, very same uh, energy level, had the very same continuance as Saul did. Now, what is the, I mean, excuse me, that uh, Silas did? I'll get it right in a minute. Uh, what, what is, what, why is that something noteworthy? He had, he was filled as Stephen was. Well, Stephen died. Stephen was stoned to death. So we find one thing about being full is that it's risky. Everybody, you know, Pentecostals, are, oh, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. What are you doing out there? See, being full, like a full tank, it don't even help you until you turn the ignition, does it? Throw her down and drive and take off. Where was Stephen stoned? Out there in the middle of everybody. What was Stephen doing when he died? He was describing to a T the situation of the Jews. Yeah. And very full of the Holy Ghost. But he's good as dead. So one thing we find about being full of the Holy Ghost, it's not going to help you physically. Don't, don't, don't get the two contrary one to the other because we find, and, and again, you take this on just what history teaches, but uh, if you've ever read Fox's Book of Martyrs or the Martyr's Mirror, uh, Barnabas died too. He, he, he didn't have a long life, but he was full of the Holy Ghost. Verse 25, then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. Now, I want you to see another element to Barnabas' ministry was that he was not prideful. 
he knew that he needed some help. Don't ever be afraid to ask for help in your ministry. Don't, don't ever be afraid to ask someone, will you go with me? The huge expanse of Gentile believers. And, and what do you suppose Barnabas needed that help? One thing, he didn't understand their culture. He was a Jew. And he knew a man named Paul that the Lord had saved that did understand their culture. So he went and found him. Wasn't embarrassed. Was, you know, he didn't even say, now I started this work and you're not going to be much involved with it, but I need to understand their culture a little bit and get a little bit of that Greek language right down uh, like the oil pit. No. He went and simply asked for help. They, he, he wanted someone that could benefit him and not so much benefit him as benefit those, believe, those new believers who understood their culture a lot better than he did and went and sought after them. Verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him on to Antioch, the very place where he was preaching, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church. With what church? Church at Antioch, right? When was it organized? When did they release the members from the church of Jerusalem? I don't find any record of that. But I do know that there was a church there. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but there's no record of it. But I do know this, that there was a church there. And they went there and they began to teach those people for a whole year. And they taught and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. What a wonderful, wonderful testimony to them, and what a wonderful testimony to Barnabas, and what a wonderful testimony to Paul. That they so taught them that they took on the very nature of Christ. You want to be sustained in 2022? Take on the nature of Christ. Be involved in him. Be, be deep set. Pray to him every day. Would to God that he would fill you with sustaining. And you know when you think about it, a year is not that long. It doesn't seem long ago at all that I was preaching a similar message to y'all at the beginning of 2021. And here we are again. A year later, all, you know, a lot of things have changed in 2021. If we have a new president, if we all be honest, we have a new nation. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not what it ought to be, but it, that's what it is. Our, our freedoms are being gibbled up bit by bit under the rule of, the, uh, of the vaccination. Mm -hmm. We need to be faithful. We need to stand. I want this to be the best year of my life. I'm older now than I've ever been. And I want this to be the best year of my life. You know, uh, they were uh, they were under some hard times there, weren't they? And uh, the Romans were going to get involved very, very soon. Uh, but they were faithful. How do you feel about this year coming? Are you excited? I am. A lot of things excite me. I hope this year of ministry will be better than I've ever had before. I hope the Lord comes back. So many potentials. Don't, don't set out. 